If you want to run a K-12 program online, listen to today's Preschool All-Stars story. Beth Koenig had a nonprofit for people with sensory impairments and autism, but she wanted to expand it to include teaching sign language to preschoolers. She was unsure how to expand her program until she started our online preschool challenge. Now she has a full online program that serves preschool through high school. Hello, and welcome to the Preschool All-Stars podcast. I'm your host, Bethany Johnson, and I'm here today with Beth Koenig. Uh, Welcome to the All-Stars podcast. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. I'm really happy to be here. I've been looking forward to it, and it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Awesome. Me too. I've been excited to talk to you and share your story. First, let's get a little background about you and uh, where you were, what life was like before you found joy in the all-stars and decided to start a preschool. Yeah. Well, before all this happened, um, I was, well, I still am running a nonprofit. Okay. Um, and so I was helping people who are deaf, blind, and autistic, and I was working on um, doing individualized tutoring and programming and stuff for them, and really just struggling to try and figure out a way to get our educational services kind of on track. And so it was, you know, it was like we were getting people the services that they needed and getting them to what they needed to do. But we recognized that there was a need to expand and offer things where we would have a program in place where they could go um, and do stuff. And so um, that had been like just something that was constantly on my mind and stuff. And I would moved um, almost all of my services I was able to pretty much do from anywhere. Okay. Um, I actually, in February, I flew back east because I'm from California. I flew back east to help my mom through her um, foot surgery. Okay. And so I was planning on spending uh, about two and, a, uh, two and a half months there and then flying back to California. Obviously, that's not exactly what happened. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's kind of where I was. I was happily running my nonprofit. Um, so that's you know, the nonprofit that you started? Uh, actually, it was started by my um, former fiance who passed away in 2013. Oh, wow. Um, Sorry to hear that. Yeah. So that kept it going? Yeah, we kept it going. And what ages do you, is it all ages? Yeah, all ages. So basically birth until, you know, they eventually That's passed awesome. Away. Yeah. That sounds like, what's, the, what's the company called? Uh, it's currently called Orange County Deaf Advocacy Center, but we're transitioning to the Sensory Impaired Guidance Network. Okay. Which uh, uses the initials S I G N oh, for cool. sign, and mm-hmm. so that's how we get the name of my preschool, Sign Preschool. Nice, that's actually, that's awesome. Yeah. So. Cool. So, um, let's see. Where were you at? You were b- with your mom back east. You said. Is that yeah. where you're at now? I was. <laughs> yeah. All of this story of like from February until. After I start my preschool in May, it takes place back in Pittsburgh. Okay, so there's our setting in Pittsburgh. How did you hear about Joy? Well, I heard about her years before, and I'd been on her email list. And so what I'd done is um, I'd just been following her on her email list. I always wanted to start a preschool and help children with sensory impairments. There was already a really good preschool program for blind children, and I wanted to... um, I wanted to expand that um, and do more with um, children that have multiple impairments. Awesome. Awesome. That's that's great. So how did joining the Preschool All-Stars help you get it all up and running? Well, that's an interesting story. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. Yeah. So I had never been able to find a location for preschool. Um, and so I had just basically been following Joy's emails and stuff and occasionally seeing them in the like thousands of emails that come through. Right. And so, uh, come March, I'm, you know, sitting around watching CNN all day for about three weeks into April. Mm -hmm. And I see, um, I get bored, like, you know, with the commercials and stuff. And so Mm -hmm. I'm scrolling through my emails. Yeah. I see all (laughs) too. And up comes one from joy, like online preschool. I'm like, what? (laughs) That could work tell me more you know so i'm clicking on it and it's like oh yeah there's a 14 day challenge and da, da, da. and the rest as they say is kind of history i was all in and i 
got up and running in less than 14 days. Um, nice. And I was, uh, my first day of class was May 4th. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I think you did the same online challenge that I did with the preschool. I started like May 18th, but that was a doozy of a two weeks, that challenge. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Let's shift gears into talking about that then. Um, how many kids do you have in your preschool right now? Um, I currently uh, teach about 12 right now. Awesome. And what's the setup like? Um, so I have my wall. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm also teaching on a Chromebook. So right now we're on my tablet, but usually I have my Chromebook and this, it would be tilted a little bit more like this. Um, and you, uh, and then, how many days a week do you teach? I only teach four days a week okay. and it's an hour per day live. And okay. so we do a first 30 minutes in one Google room and then I make them switch out to uh, another Google room. Okay. And then is it, so is it like the preschool pals for the last 30 minutes and the teaching time for the first 30 minutes? Is that how you do it? Yeah, so we do our teaching time. And actually during teaching time, um, I learned a few months in that I could just mute the children. And now with Google Meet, what's interesting is you can't actually unmute them. They have to unmute yeah. themselves. That's the same with Zoom, which I, I hate. I hate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's really interesting because, um, Zoom, you, that was my main, uh, my main concern actually with, um, with using Google Meet is that I couldn't mute and unmute them, mm -hmm. but it ended up not really being an issue because I could just, I'm watching them and I lip read mostly, mm. um, you know, being around deaf people all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I can lip read fairly well. And when I'm teaching, I know to look for certain words that they're responding to me with. And so there's only like a few instances um, that I can't lip read what they're saying and then prompt them to sign it. And so I just, um, if they do say something that I can't understand, I'm like, oh, okay, let's remember our microphones are off. So we'll talk about that when we go to the next class. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And so that seems, that seems to work really well. So are the kids in your class hearing impaired or are they just learning sign language? Because that's the most, yeah, most of them are actually just learning sign language just because their parents value it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I do have a couple of kiddos that have um, maybe a speech impairment mm -hmm. that they're kind of working on. But yeah, um, I only have one kid um, that um, they're afraid that he might go deaf later in life. Okay. And so we're we're keeping an eye on that. But yeah, for the most part, they're just learning sign language to learn it. And how long have you been signing? I've been signing since I was in middle school. My mom um, was an aide in a severely handicapped classroom that used uh, what they call C-Sign. Okay. And so my first sign language was actually signing exact English, C-Sign. Oh, okay. And so when I went to um, the classes in middle school um, to learn ASL, I had a hard time transitioning. And then when I went into high school um, and then college, in college, I really learned ASL and picked it up, but um, I was working around deaf people that also had grown up with C sign. So everybody around me pretty much has C sign accent, and okay. so that's kind of what I picked up. And I still have a bit of C sign accent. In fact, it's funny because in my ad for my preschool class, people actually call me out on the fact that I use letter instead of letter. Wow, that's so interesting that there's accents for I had I didn't even know that C sign was a thing. And then hearing that there's like accents for different sign language, I had no idea. That's really interesting. Yeah. And a lot of people when they hear that I um teach preschool in sign language, they assume that I'm teaching in American sign language. Mm -hmm. And that's actually not the case. I'm actually teaching in what they call pigeon signed English. Okay. Or PSD. So I'm using ASL signs, but I'm using them in English word order. And um, at first I was very conflicted about it because I'm like, well, why aren't I teaching ASL? But if I was to do that, I would have to simply not talk mm -hmm. because if I was to speak um, using ASL grammar, that would like completely throw the kids off. Right. You know, and I'd still be using sign gloss to speak and that's just ridiculous. You just don't do it. Um, and so I was really conflicted for a while, but I'm like, you know what? I'm looking at these kids, every single one of them's hearing. Every single one of them is not a native signer, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so PSE makes sense, um, you know. So um, eventually my program, we're going to hire a deaf teacher who will be completely voiceless ASL only. Okay. Um, and so that will be where we'll put our advanced kids. So when they come in, they're going to be doing PSE, building their vocabulary so they can understand 
um, words and stuff, and then we'll put them into the ASL class where they'll develop that more. Wow, that's just that's really cool. So when you started, let's see, May fourth, you said, and are the kids like able to talk back to you in sign? Yeah, a lot of them when they're muted, they'll just sign back to me because they know I can understand that better than them speaking. That's so, so cool. That's really awesome. Yeah. In fact, one of the kids, it was really cute. I didn't even know that he could um, figure out stuff, but he was able to tell me that his local park was closed. Wow. And he used the sign for closed book because he was talking, you know, he was talking about the park and stuff. So he was saying park and then closed book. I'm like, was a book in the park? No. Oh, the park's closed, <laughs> you know, and so. Yeah, um, it, it's really interesting. Even at that young age, they're able to conceptualize things and put things together. And it's just yeah, really absolutely. That must be really awesome to see. Wow. So what's your favorite part about running a preschool? My favorite part is getting to interact with the kids and seeing them learn and grow. And it's just, it's it's so amazing. I, I just love it. It's everything that I love about tutoring, but there's a lot less pressure because, um, you know, when I was tutoring, it's like, okay, we have certain expectations. We have certain goals. We have to meet this by this by this, you know. And yeah. with preschool, it's like, okay, you have a whole year's worth of curriculum and you're doing it in a little segment and you're watching to see how the kids are and you're watching to see if there's any deficits. And if there's any deficits, you can just address them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot more laid back, a lot more relaxed. Um, I just, I just, I just absolutely love it. Um, I think my biggest issue is I'm so used to one on one tutoring where you have everything like, you know, you just go from one thing to the next to the next. And um, it's kind of interesting trying to do group dynamics for like preschool pals. Yeah. So actually the whole group dynamics thing with preschool pals is actually the thing I struggle with the most is like giving them the time to actually respond and think. Mm -hmm. You know, and then knowing when to prompt them and when to step back and let them have the space. Yeah. And so I, yeah, a lot of people are like, well, you know, we, da, 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 da. and I'm like, no, like I, I struggle with my own social skills, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, I know exactly we... what you mean with the preschool pals. That can get, that can get hard, especially because you want to give them the time to answer. And then you know, the longer that you give them, the longer you're losing everyone else. And you could just like see <laughs> their, you know, that's definitely yeah. a hard dynamic to, to figure out. So if, if I asked your preschool families why they choose your preschool, what do you think they would tell me? Um, probably the sign language program right yeah. now. Um, we and offer, how do, you, do you market on Facebook? Is that your biggest, your yeah. biggest sale? Yeah. And so you market it as a sign, sign school. Yeah. Do you have ads like Facebook ads or do you put it in? Uh, yeah. Your, your... I, I have, yeah. I have run Facebook ads and it's interesting because I made that um, video that's like a minute and 26 seconds. Okay. Um, and it's basically me doing a bunch of little preschool activities and signing them. Mm -hmm. Um, and then at the end, asking them to join us, you know. Um, so you do, let's see, you said four hours a week. How much do you charge for the online class for four, for um, four hours? For a two day class, I do 49. And for the four day class, I do, uh, 97. Okay. Awesome. That's great. So where do you see yourself taking this? I mean, what's your next big plans for your preschool? Well, what's really interesting about my preschool is that it's actually um, a component of our overall education plan. Okay, um, for your nonprofit? Yeah, and so we're going to have a component for, like, um, babies. Um, it's called Sign Talk. Okay. And so we're working on developing that. Um, we have a K-12 program that I'm actively um, developing. I already have three kids in that program. They're all teenagers, and they're doing high school um, and early college. And so um, we're, we're super excited. They're actually right now, the teens are participating in Facebook's um, programming um, thing. Was it engineer for the week? Okay. And in two days, we actually get to talk to a live Facebook engineer. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be really cool for the kids. And are you looking um, to keep it all online? Or are you looking to expand to local? Well, for me personally, um, the way I see the numbers going in the United States, mm -hmm. um, we're not going to be doing anything local for a while. Yeah. And so um, has your nonprofit moved to all online stuff? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Everything is done online now. Um, and it was like, it was 98% online before. Okay. So it was, so it was just, easy. yeah, closing that gap, you know, and now, um, it's actually easier because a lot of people have had to 
you know, find services and stuff online. So they're a little bit more familiar mm-hmm. with the way to do things. Yeah. And so it's actually been a really, um, a really good thing in that way. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool that you were looking for, you know, you had this need, you were looking for a way to fill it and then you were able to do it even, you know, throughout this pandemic, it actually kind of helped your business almost as not as, as bad as that sounds, but it, you know, gave you a platform that you didn't have already. Yeah, it, reach, it definitely did. Yeah, it was, it was really something of a miracle almost the way like all the pieces just start locking in together mm-hmm. um, this whole thing. And um, it's, it's really nice because um, I actually am in talks with somebody. Um, uh, her son is going to be graduating out of the um, school system. Mm-hmm. And so we're kind of um, figuring out where the high school program um, and an adult transition program can kind of fit so that we can take our special needs, um, high schoolers and make sure they're in their adult transition period. Oh, wow. Yeah. Also, um, integrating them with our early college kids at the same oh, wow. time. That's so awesome. even though they're doing two completely different curriculums, yeah. we're still finding the intersection where that meets and figuring that part out. And so that, that, that's something that I'm really looking forward to. And then for our adult programs, we're actually going to be revamping them. Um, so hopefully by January or February, all of that will be done. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah. So you've got it covered from tots all the way to adults. You've got yeah. it all covered. That's awesome. And what would you say the biggest way that, um, being in the preschool all stars helped you figure out this new component? What did, what was oh, preschool all stars? Yeah, preschool all stars is the is the only reason I figured it out. Basically, oh, yeah? the conversations that we had in there. Um, basically, you know, we were doing online preschool and stuff, and then people start having these K twelve conversations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And through that, I'm like, wait a minute, are you telling me that I can actually teach children K twelve curriculum? Mm-hmm. You know, and so I started with the kindergarten program and integrating that into the preschool. And I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. And so there's actually an overlap between my kindergarten program and my K-12 program. Okay. Uh, and what basically the difference is as to which program they go into is if their state mandates kindergarten, they would be in the 12, okay. K-12 program because those children have to be homeschooled. Mm-hmm. That's the only way they get into my program is if they're homeschooled. Yeah, because we're not a private school. We're not looking to take over public. We're not right. a charter. We're strictly homeschool enrichment. Uh huh. But we offer so much that you would think we were a private school, basically. Right. right. So you have different. You teach the four hours a week for preschool, and then you do. You have different kindergarten classes that are separate from those, um, or are they integrated the, in? The kindergarten's integrated in, and so our preschool program follows a kindergarten curriculum all okay. the way through. And then you um, teach other classes for different ages, K through 12 online? Yeah. So, so K to 12 is first grade to sixth grade is going to be in the block. Um, okay. Those kiddos haven't started yet because we just don't have enough to start. Okay. And then um, the uh, seventh to 12th graders are in the block. And okay. so right now we're doing an hour and a half with our um, high school program. And our uh, seventh and eighth graders would join that program. And so basically what it would be is um, they'll get to see how the, you know, early college students are dealing with stuff at, while they're still working on their seventh and eighth grade curriculum. Okay. And then they'll just make that smooth transition. Now, if they finish their seventh and eighth grade curriculum early and they're still like considered a seventh or eighth grader, mm-hmm. I can move them right into early college. That's right. not a problem. Right. Uh, and so it allows a lot of flexibility. I see us being able to accept gifted children um, as well as those with sensory impairments um, because I have the ability to talk and sign at the same time. We could have kids with speech impairments or kids um, that would need, I can basically interpret if we get somebody that's fluent in ASL, I could be, I could act as the interpreter. Um, I could hire somebody that is an interpreter to come into the class if it becomes an ongoing thing. So there's, there's just a wide variety of stuff that we could do. Yeah. Um, my, my next challenge is oh, integrating um, children with visual impairments into the program. Okay. And so um, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, this school year and looking over all the curriculum I'm using and seeing what's working and everything like that. 
And then I'm going to figure out the basic concepts and stuff. And I'm going to figure out how we can get tactile models and stuff. Okay. Um, and actually we would be shipping kits to the kids' homes. Um, awesome. and their parents would be sitting down with them while our classes are playing. Wow. And so when we hold up, you know, the, mm -hmm. they would have it actually on a, on a page. Okay, they would braille? have a flashcard page. Yeah. They'd have a braille flashcard page. So, Basically, instead of flashcards for those, yeah. I mean, they have probably set the flashcards, but they'd have pages of sight words. And so the parents can just direct them to the correct word. That's so cool. Wow. So yeah. I feel like the possibilities are endless. You're, you're just oh, running gosh. away with so oh. many ideas. That's awesome. And how many, is it just you as a teacher right now? Or you already have other um, teachers hired? I do have um, my business partner who okay. is actually out in Lancaster right now. He runs our eBay and Amazon stores for the nonprofit. Okay. And uh, he's also um, my sub when I'm sick or something happened. And we actually, in, uh, we started out teaching the class together. Okay. Um, and then just because of the nature of where I was, it was being like really hot. Mm -hmm. And basically his laptop was overheating. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so do that, that part of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So let's see, in closing, as we're getting to the, for those people who haven't joined the All Stars and are looking for, you know, something more, looking to fulfill whatever need it is for you, it was looking to fill that gap in your own program. But for others, it's, you know, we have so many stories of what they're looking for and they're kind of on the fence about joining the All Stars. What would you say to them? Oh, I, it's, it's, it's brilliant. I, I can't express enough how much all stars has helped me and the other people that I've seen. And I just, I really, I would advise anybody who's on the fence, just join. Like, even if you just join for a month or two, get in here, see what you're missing. I mean, it's, it, it's completely awesome. Like all the things that you have access to are just, it, it's, it's unbelievable, really. For the value, it's just, it's, it's, it's absolutely astounding. So. Agreed. Agreed. And is there anything else you'd like to share uh, that I haven't gotten a chance to ask you about? Um, that's a good question. I'll put you on the spot there. That's a hard one. <laughs> I'm sure there's tons we could talk about forever, but anything else you'd like to hone in there about your story or anything, really? Well, for people who, like, if you don't know whether you want to do online or local, I would definitely advise you to do online first mm -hmm. um, because I do see eventually that we might actually have in-person local, whether that's franchising mm -hmm. or running our own in-house programs when we eventually get a ranch. Uh, we're looking at um, being a ranch. Property. That's awesome. Yeah, that's kind of the dream. We want to get the property and build a facility there so that um, when we have adults with special needs that need residential training, um, you know, deaf blind individuals, newly blinded individuals, um, people that suddenly lost their hearing, um, they would have a place to go and learn all those skills. Yeah, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what we want to do. That's basically a self sustaining ranch by and for people with uh, sensory impairments. So that's wow, that's an, awesome. that's an awesome dream. I hope that comes true for you. That sounds awesome, and I'm excited to. Keep hearing about your journey and getting there. I thank you so much for talking to me. This was a great time. This is very enlightening about all there is, even even with sign language. I feel like I need to go do some more research about all there is out there with that. Oh, yeah. Sign language is definitely something of a topic that you can definitely like. There's a lot more to it that people don't, don't know about. Like not all sign language is universal. Here in the U.S. and Canada, we use ASL. Mm -hmm. um, in Mexico, they use Mexican sign language. Mm -hmm. um, so different is it a lot different? Like if you can, if you can speak one, can you kind of speak the others or is it nowhere near? Yeah, they're kind of a little bit related. Um, our ASL is more related to French sign language than British sign language. Okay. So you're more likely to understand somebody from France than you are Britain. Um, especially because the British, uh, the British finger spelling system is completely different. Mm. Um, whereas the French, we actually got, um, our alphabet from France. Mm. Um, because, um, Believe it or not, the teachers for the, that were teaching children who were deaf, um, in England refused to let, um, Gallaudet, that's the guy that went over and brought back our, um, 
sign language system, he actually um, was refused to go to England um, to observe them. They didn't want him there because their system was proprietary, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, well, he ended up in France. <laughs> yeah. He ended up in France and he learned the French sign language system and brought back one of their star pupils who became one of the first teachers who's deaf. And so, um, yeah, a beautiful history. Yeah. Um, you know, you can read about it. It's, it's just amazing stuff. There you go. There's your sign history lesson for all the all stars out there. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me. I've had a great time and I wish you lots of luck on your journey. And I can't wait to hear what happens next. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting. I, I can't wait to see what happens myself. Absolutely. We will be following you in the all stars group. And we appreciate all of your help because I don't know whoever's listening to this knows this, but you're one of the biggest contributors and you're always jumping on helping anyone who needs any help. So we appreciate you a lot in that group. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm definitely really good with technology. Yeah, um, which is nice because most of us, I feel like, are not. I know I am not. <laughs> yeah, Definitely yeah. not. That's a lot of help to have you in there. Well, you have an awesome night, Beth. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course, of course. Best wishes to you and good luck with everything. Thanks, you too. I'll see you later. All right, bye-bye. If you'd like to have a success story just like that one, I invite you to join our preschool all-stars. It's my exclusive membership community where you'll get mentorship from me with weekly Q&A lives, support and guidance and friendship from hundreds of women on the exact same journey as you starting running and growing their preschools, and my exclusive access to Preschool University, every training and done-for-you file that you'll need for every milestone on your journey to help you start, run, and grow your preschool. We've all been there, and we've got the exact same steps that you need to go through, but we do it all very quickly so that you don't have to waste time or money doing the wrong things at the wrong time. We'd love for you to join our Preschool All-Stars membership. Just go to preschoolallstars.com or click the link in the description to a immediately jump into preschool all-stars again go to preschoolallstars.com and we'll see you there